In this video, I will go over the fifth encounter zenith, the boss battle with the witness in the Salvation's Edge raid. This guide will be fairly visual and beginner friendly so anyone can get into the fight. When you spawn in, there will be a central platform with the witness in front of it and a, one side on the left and one side on the right. You will divide into two roles, the hand or runner role and the add clear role. That is super critical in this fight. Depending on how good people are in their roles, you can go as low as two hand rolls and the rest add clear or three hand rolls and three add clear. I can't emphasize how important add clear is in this encounter. You can't phone that role in. It is super critical to have really good add clear people on your team. The hand team role ultimately is to break the buttons on the witness cloak so you can begin DPS. To do this, I will walk through an example from the encounter from one of the perspectives. In this case, I'm gonna be running the circle hand, which is the hand that's coming out of the ground. This obviously this hand will spawn a resonance circle that you can jump into to gain spherical resonance, but also you can shoot the hand to see what resonance you will need to be able to get next to get glyph breaker. I will put up a quick graphic that shows you the color and shape of each resonance you need to potentially pick up. To keep this simple, don't try to overcomplicate this. When you're doing this, you're gonna be running a specific role. So you can focus on memorizing those particular resonance and things you need to do. So don't overcomplicate this. Don't try to figure this entire chart out from the beginning. In my example, since you're running circle, you either need to run to get triangle, which is also green, or square, which is also red, to grab the needed buff. If it's triangle, that can spawn anywhere on the map, right or left. It will generally spawn near where more than one guardian is located on the map, similar to what's happened in previous portions of this raid. It is very important for the ad clear people to not move too far forward in the arena because that will cause the triangle resonance area to spawn way in the middle of ads and you don't want that. So be very careful about that. And again, any of the hands can move and specifically, let's not even talk about hands, triangle can move anywhere on the map. So you're going to have to constantly be on the swivel to figure out where it's at. Once you locate it, try to stay in it for a few seconds and you'll get the triangle resonance buff as you did in previous encounters. Once you have this, head back to circle resonance area and shoot the hand coming out of the ground to get glyph breaker. And when you do that, you'll see the buff that comes on your screen. That's what you're going to need to go to the center. Once you have this buff, you proceed to the middle platform and shoot a button off the witness. You don't have to do it from there. You can do it from anywhere. But being on the platform removes the stacks. And remember, having more than three stacks kills you. Also, if there's some other players that accidentally picked up stacks or need help, they can come with you. And as long as they're on the platform, when you, you shoot the glyph breaker at the button, their stacks will go back to zero. Now to get the other square or red buff, you will need to find the hand that is pointing straight at you that will cast a beam in a straight line. This line will move, so you need to keep that in mind. But that's how you get that buff. That's also the hand that you'll need to shoot if you're doing that particular hand. Finally, the triangle green buff, as a reminder, is the hand that's going down. So again, if you're doing that one, you'll obviously have to shoot that hand. One thing to keep in mind, since triangle moves all over the place, this is the most difficult one to do as a runner. This, again, sounds super complicated, but if you focus on one of the three hands, you'll pick it up fairly quickly after a few runs, as long as ad clear is on point. I'll be honest with you, after a few times, because again, you're gonna see on the hand, you're gonna see not only the color, but the shape, I would very easily, after a while, be able to say, hey, this is a color, it's this one. So again, after a few times, you pick it up really quickly. One thing that can mess you up is multiple hands spawning. The issue is that each hand may require different resonance so that can get tricky. An additional hand can spawn if you shoot the same hand twice. In other words, you shoot circle, you do glyph breaker, and you do circle before someone else does. That'll cause a second hand to spawn. Also, if you ignore one and only focus on the two others, like let's say you decide you don't want to do triangles it's all over the place, then you're going to have a additional triangle hand show up and you'll have additional one of those showing up on the map. So again, that's you got That's why running three runners is best. But if you're struggling, it is possible, you may have to deal with a few extra hands to assist the ad clear people by having an additional ad clear person. Every time you break a button on the witness, a subjugator will spawn, which the, with the ad clearing folks are responsible to take down. And if you can help out, you can. One good piece of news, if two are on the field at the same time, it, no, another one won't spawn until they're down. So you can make a decision to leave them up the entire time and just control them. Or you can decide, let's say you put the two in. If you if you still have glyph, if you still have them up, then the subjugator's up. Then you can just go ahead and put a third in without an additional subjugator showing up. So again, that's another strategy you can use. One additional mechanic will appear that will mess teams up. During your glyph breaker period, 
One of those, when you shoot it, will see you'll see a message saying the witness tests you. And this is when you shot the hand you need to get the glyph breaker buff. Again, when that this happens, the last hand shot will go yellow or gold and go completely crazy. Whichever hand that is, the shape you will need to make out of the glyphs that come in front of the witness. Instead of showing you an infographic, there are plenty of those out there, feel free to look for them. I will show you all three variants so it is very clear what you're looking to do. Do this correctly, and then you will need to time a jump when the witness attempts to kill everyone. You will know the timing by looking for the witness's eyes glowing or having an auto cue. Failure to shoot the correct symbol pattern will result in an automatic wipe. Once you break all the buttons, it is time for DPS on the witness. If you have a lot of extra time prior to this, it is probably a good idea to do some ad clear so there's less of a chance of issues during DPS. Also, you can bank Glyph baker Breakers by having the other runners gain this buff and taking it in between DPS phases, even if you just have one left to shoot, so they can jumpstart the next phase of the encounter. DPS for this fight is very similar to the Excision mission if you have not done that before, and that's a good place to practice if you haven't. The first key is to watch the floor. The Witness will always take up half of the floor and then switch the other half of an Arge Resonance that will hurt you. Say, for instance, resin starts in the upper left. It will be followed by back left along the same line in the floor. Watching the floor and seeing where the bulk of the orange is will allow you to know which direction to move in, in order to avoid the attack. Normally around two of these are done in a row, and then he will do an attack which requires you to jump. You can get the timing through audio cues, but his eyes will also glue. There is a quick jump and a slower one. Do this a number of times before the phase is over, one additional tip is if you find yourself towards the edge and can't escape the resonance, you can float or jump towards the side of the platform and come, then come back. So for instance, on the Hunter, you can do a single jump off and then do your other two jumps the time coming back and landing on the platform. And with a Warlock, you can you can float and with a Titan, I don't know, do something Titan-y. Running triple solar resist is key here in healing grenades, turrets, and a well. Because again, healing is very important. It's also, damage is not that bad as long as you stay alive. So don't try to maximize damage if you struggle with things like Still Hunt or things like that. If you can do that, it's great. But again, it's really about consistency and not dying because running out of lives in this encounter, it's what's gonna prevent you from completing it. Head back and just do it all over again, right? It's just the same thing at that point. Do this enough times before the enrage kicks in, right? You only have so many phases to do this and there'll be a final stand. Obviously during final stand, he becomes immune then you can damage him. If you don't do enough damage enough time, you wipe. But that's the entire counter. I'm not gonna really go over the ad clear. Ad clear is pretty simple. Just again, clear the ads. You need to make sure you that stuff stays on point because your runners have to stay alive and have to not die to be able to move you to the DPS phase. That's the video guys. Great encounter. Um, I actually really like this one. It was a fresh, it was a breath of fresh air after being stuck in Verity for a while. And I'm sure a lot of you guys will feel the same way. The DPS phase is a little bit of a challenge. Um, that will challenge you. But again, once you get the feel of it, it'll become like second nature. But that's the video. If you like the video, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.